So for the benefit of the devotees present who are eager to hear, if you yourself would like to lead Kirtan, that would be most welcome. I'll do it. And may Krishna bless you for your efforts. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Stavule Guru Das Jai Vecha Samani Tinamani Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Stavule Srimadhi Bhakti Vedanta Samani Tinamani Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Vrse Shashunyavari Paschati Deshatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Gaurav Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hari Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hari. Hari Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jayam Vishnupad Paramahamsa, Privraja Kacharya Astotar Sata Shri Shimad, His Divine Grace, Shila A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Privraja Kacharya Astotra Sattar Shishimat His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaisna Brindi Ki Jai Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Seka Ho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adwaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadigoura Bhakta Brindi Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopal Gopinath Shamakund Radhakund Girgavadan Ki Jai Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Navadip Mayapur Dham Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamuna Mai Ki Jai, Tulasi Maharani Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samabeta Bhakta Brindi Ki Jai, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, Gora Premanande, Hari Hari Bo.
Hari Hari Bo, thank you so much, Panchatatva Prabhu, and welcome everyone to the Srimad Bhagavatam class with Jayadvaita Swami and friends. It is Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. We're reading in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, 24th chapter, tonight, starting with text 40. And hoping everyone will be willing to read the commentary and verses and give their own commentary. My voice is overspent today, so I won't be vocally participating, and neither will my wife. And it looks like Maharaj is still on his indexing marathon, so he won't be with us. So we're eager to hear from you. So Hare Krishna, and thank you all for being here. Hare Bo, Hare Bo. Hey, Vijay Krishna Prabhu, would you like to do the service of reading and commenting upon the first verse? Uh, uh, and, the ver and the first verse is? Uh, Canto 3, Chapter 24, Text 40. Yes. Uh, should I start? Yes, please. Thank you very much. You're most kind. Matra adhyatmi kim vidyam shamanin sarva karmanam vitari sheyaya cha sau hayam chati tari shyatim. Translation I shall also describe this sublime knowledge which is the door to spiritual life, to my mother, so that she also can attain perfection and self-realization, ending all reactions to fruitive activities. Thus, she also will be freed from all material fear. Purport. Kardama Muni was anxious about his good wife, Devahuti, while leaving home and so the worthy son promised that not only would kardama muni be freed from the material entanglement but devahuti would also be freed by receiving instruction from her son a very good example is set here the husband goes away taking the sannyasa order for self-realization but his representative, the son, who is equally educated, remains at home to deliver the mother. A sannyasi is not supposed to take his wife with him. At the vanaprastha stage of retired life, or the stage midway between householder life and renounced life, one may keep his wife as an assistant without sex relations. But in the sannyasa order of life, one cannot keep his wife with him. Otherwise, a person like Kardamamuni could have kept his wife with him, and there would have been no hindrance to his prosecution of self-realization. Kardamamuni followed the Vedic injunction that no one in sannyasa life can have any kind of relationship with women. But what is the position of a woman who is left by her husband? She is entrusted to the son, and the son promises that he will deliver his mother from entanglement. A woman is not supposed to take sannyas, so called spiritual societies concocted in modern times give sannyas even to women, although there is no sanction in the Vedic literature for a woman's accepting sannyas. Otherwise, if it were sanctioned, Kardama Muni could have taken his wife and given her sannyas. The woman must remain at home she has only three stages of life. Dependency on the father in childhood, dependency on the husband in youth, and in old age, dependence 
on the grown up sun, such as Capilla. In old age, the progress of woman depends on the grown up sun. The ideal son, Kapila Muni, is assuring his father of the deliverance of his mother so that his father may go peacefully without anxiety for his good wife. Okay. Would you like to make some comment on what you've read, Prabhu? Mm. I liked it when in the purple Chira Prabhupada mentioned that mentioned about the the program for the life of a woman related to the different stages of life, which are three. <laughs> and are they're all based on dependency. The mm. first one is to be dependent on the father in childhood. The second one is to be dependent on the husband in youth and in old age, to be dependent on the grown up son. And I, I am mentioning, I am coming, commenting like this because characteristically, characteristically in, in Kali Yuga, women do not know how to live their lives. So uh, if they study Srimad Bhagavatam, they, they will learn how what to do and how to do it. Mm. That's it. That's my comment. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm not, yeah, not only about, about becoming dependent, but about everything related to how to live in in the body of a woman, how 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 to inhabit the body of a woman, uh, not only related to becoming dependent, but also related to doing everything else related to inhabiting the body of a woman. Because Shrimad Bhagavatam is the literature; it is the literature which answers all the questions. Hmm. Yes, Prabhu. Go ahead. Yes, nice point. I, I I think about those statements of dependence, and I think about, you know, there's there are three relationships being defined there as well. A relationship meaning, the woman is taking uh, uh, is 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 taking shelter uh, of these three different personalities: father, husband, son. But it also uh, indicates that those are responsibilities that those three personalities are supposed to take. Uh, the father, the husband, and then the grown-up son. So there's, there's the focus on the dependence of the woman. But at the same time, it's being defined that there's a, a very serious responsibility for, for, for those uh, male uh, characters in her life. Yes, the and, teaching is also uh, directed towards them. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. Unfortunately, Kali Yuga is so disturbed topsy -turvy. and topsy-turvy that those roles are often neglected. The responsibilities are neglected. And uh, it's not necessarily without cause that women feel oftentimes that they are not being protected. So... Uh, in, in, the, in the proper establishment of Vedic culture, we, we see the responsibilities being upheld by the men is very important. So I would comment in that way. I think that the general direction of the purport is to indicate uh, th that these roles are very important and to also indicate that ultimately the path, in particular for the man, is one of of renunciation um, and uh, uh, preparing ultimately for leaving this world and going back home, back to Godhead, at least uh, preparing oneself spiritually by making spiritual advancement. Uh, that's that's what the human life is for. And particularly in the older age, when one has 
uh, when it's time to be freed from, to, to, to shed the responsibilities of family life and material life, uh, one has to be prepared to do so. So Cardamom Muni was setting this uh, example Boy, talk about having the perfect son to take take charge of his wife. You, you couldn't have had a better. <laughs> yeah, he was very response. lucky. <laughs> yeah, it's per it's real nice to be able to say these things when you have <laughs> you have the perfect son to take charge, and uh, uh, and the woman has had the perfect husband and the perfect father. <laughs> so I'm Bubamanu. So. Huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, you have an under. You have a coming. I was wondering, what if the woman you have doesn't to, you have, have to son? reach up, speak into the microphone? Yeah. What if the woman doesn't have a son? Then what? She goes back to the father. That's a good question. Does anybody want to comment? Are there comments in the chat? <laughs> she goes back. I pronounce to, to everyone. There are quite uh, a few comments in the chat box. Okay, very, um, very good. And I think for today's class, I've. Well, um, I'm okay to do that. Oh, so that'd be perfect. Just get... <laughs> All right. So, Ekender Prabhu, I think he made. Oh, just okay. I think his question was along the same lines. What happens? Um, uh, you know, if uh, there yeah. uh, there is no grown up son or a daughter, um, and he says, "I've never seen a Shri Prabhu address this in any of his purports." Is a husband yeah. in such a position not obliged to take sannyas? Um, and I don't know if we want to answer that. I've, I've got a few thoughts um, along those lines. Um, please, uh, please, I had, please share. I had a, <laughs> all right. Um, I have a. I had a relative who was extremely Krishna conscious, um, and um, she raised her children to be Krishna conscious. But for whatever reason, one of uh, her only son he fell into really bad association. And um, really left um, the teachings, the practice. He, he just took up drinking, took up eating meat. Um, and it was extremely, extremely painful um, for this relative um, to be living in a household where this, this kind of behavior was taking place. Sure, they allocated a certain part of the residence where, you know, she didn't have to come into direct contact with meat and uh, witness the sun drinking um, like a fish. Uh, but still, it was it came to a point where she couldn't um, it, she wouldn't she didn't want to do it anymore. Then the question begs itself. Well, what what would she have? What did she do? So what she really did is she packed her bags and uh, moved to Gokul, Gokul over in the, in the Braj Dam. And oh. uh, she lived out the rest of her life there um, in the company of other Vaishnavas, uh, whether they were widows or found themselves in the same position as her. Yeah. Um, and I, my mother and I, we used to go and visit her because, as I said, she was a relative. Um, and we found that we were so inspired and encouraged with the decisions she'd made in her life. Um, and uh, you could see that be just being in Braj Dumi, of course, everybody who's been there can um, attest to the fact you 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 really your consciousness changes um and uh, you you feel very much in touch with krishna this is past times we never talk about krishna's pastimes in the past because they're continuously taking place but that was a uh, we we felt that that was such a good um thing that she did um and it was a lesson for for those who might find themselves in the same situation there is a choice yeah. of course it's not uh in within everyone's reach to go to a uh, bridge dam but you could make a choice to try and find the association of other Vaishnava women, Vaishnavis, who could be in the same position. And uh, that's all right. There's the, you know, you could, you could find, you could make that choice. Uh, uh, thank you. I don't know if anybody else has any comments, but there are other comments in the chat box, but if anyone wants to address this particular comment, um, they could go ahead. That was, that was a great example. Yeah. I think it's an example that, that Prabhupada more than once, uh, or uh, uh, the type of advice, general advice that Prabhupada more than once gave to his female disciples when they were in similar predicaments. There was one story that my wife's fond of. She heard from a Prabhupada disciple, a lady, a very, very advanced devotee who re left her body some years ago. Her, her husband 
in this case, it was her husband who was not so Krishna conscious. She was just coming uh, and uh, joining Krishna consciousness. And she met Srila Prabhupada with her husband at that time, her husband of that time. And her husband kept, from time to time, he was getting up and leaving leaving the darshan. And finally, Prabhupada said, said to her, where, where is he going? And she said, well, Srila Prabhupada, he's, he's addicted to smoking. He's going outside to smoke. <clears throat> and what, what was it that Prabhupada said to? Srila Prabhupada looked at yeah. her. Srila Prabhupada looked at her with compassion in his eyes. And he said, the man is the ha uh, head of the household. And the woman is the neck. The neck turns the head. So if the woman is Krishna conscious, she can change all of society. That's it. And she she related that personally to my wife years ago. It's a nice another nice example where Prabhupada was encouraging. Here is this woman who is a Vaishnava but is struggling because her husband had Addiction. some addictions. And Prabhupada spoke to her with great compassion and, and basically was saying, You uphold your end, your Krishna consciousness. And by that, by the strength of your Krishna consciousness, everything will be adjusted by Krishna. So, so there are, you know, different advice at different times, but that was a very good bit of advice. You know, we have temples all over the world. Those places are basically embassies of the spiritual world. They are little brudge doms, devotees who are in difficulty because of whatever circumstance in their, you know, in their life, men, women, you know, otherwise, they can, uh, they can take shelter of the association of the devotees. And in this case, seeking the association of, of a woman in, in, in some predicament like this, seeking the association of senior Vaishnavis is very good. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Uh, 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 Panchatatva Prabhu, what, what, what if uh, the wife is not Krishna conscious and the husband is? Sanyas. That's another thing. Um, that's another thing. If, that, if, if, if the man is actually Krishna conscious, then he has to continue pursuing his Krishna consciousness. If the woman wants to uh, take his lead, then good. If she doesn't want to, then there will be, you know, it, it won't work. For him, maybe it's a blessing because this is opportunity to take a bana pras and sannyas. I see. Yes. Uh huh. It 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 makes sense. It's a yes. It it's a ble in some way. It may be a blessing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you. At the, at the same time, someone who is <laughs> someone should not use this principle to uh, to falsely claim that they're Krishna conscious when they're not really. And dodge their their responsibilities to a spouse, you know. Of course, yes. So this this ha has happened in the past, so so we should be very careful about these matters. Yes. Um, that, let's see what's in the chat. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Praveen um, is saying today uh, a woman doesn't uh, live in a joint family. Else, else, if she's. I think what he's trying to say she could be somebody else's, some other person's um, responsibility. I think we kind of answered that. that yeah, I think we kind of answered that. that. Yeah, I think we kind of answered that. And uh, no, it's not up in the air outside of the family, some responsible man taking, you know, there is no such thing as a, what do they call it? Platonic relationship between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. that, yes. That, that does not exist. That's a, that's, that's a fallacy that's haunted Western society for some time. And every, anybody with any, any sense can see that that doesn't actually happen. You don't, you just don't have a, you know, a, a intimate association without it having uh, some sort of sexual overtones. It's just there. So therefore uh, the men and women restrict their association with each other, even in, even in Grihasta life. It's, it's, uh, one is warned. <laughs> what was that, uh, example Prabhupada gave? Prabhupada saw, for example, at one time in a society, the men and women of different marriages were going on the altar and sometimes falling down with, uh, with this other woman out, you know. So you, you, 
e even in grihasta life, there one has to practice some precautions because Maya is very strong, and we may not be so advanced. And even if we are actually an advanced devotee, we'll be very careful about Maya. It's the ones that haven't taken Krishna consciousness seriously uh, that uh, treat this matter casually. It should not be treated casually. Should be very careful. Uh, is it all right if I add a comment? I'm, um, yes, uh, of course, please. <laughs> Uh, thank you for your patience if I share quite a few things about my family, but I am in the process of writing um, things as uh, Jed Vita Maharaj had uh, once indicated to me to write things oh. um, in a book. So one of the things I wanted to share was that my mother was extremely Krishna conscious when she got married to my father. Now, my father came from a family where they worshipped Lord Shiva. And um, they weren't really very Krishna conscious. They, uh, my father himself, he was following um, the regulative principles, but a lot of his uh, family members that they all lived as a joint family, for instance, his siblings, they weren't all necessarily following this. Um, they took up meat eating and drinking. So when my mother got married, it was a, a massive shock to her system uh, to try and live in a household where this was happening. And uh, and my father was put into a very tricky position because on the one hand, he accepted what my mother was saying. But on the other hand, because they lived in a joint family and his siblings were older, it, he was just put into a tough position where it was hard for him to try and control their behavior. Um, of course, mm. they were seen as elders. Um, and there came a point when my mother actually wanted to leave my father. And she went to uh, this all took place in Uganda. She got married and not only just moved out of the country, but moved into this household that had taken up these so-called modern practices. So she went to India and she told her mother, oh, I don't think I can. I don't want to go back. I want to end this marriage. And uh, it wasn't that my grandmother, who was even more Krishna conscious than my, my mother, that she, she didn't push my mother into any one direction, but she wanted to hear um, from my mother what, she, if my mother did take this decision, what did she base it on? What were her future plans? And um, to be introspective, um, to see in herself as well, because it's not that my mother was without flaws. She wasn't a pure devotee, a liberated soul. So uh, she wanted my mother to write down the pros and cons. She wanted my mother to acknowledge that my father did have good qualities. It wasn't that, you know, just a big cross uh, along my father's name. Um, so she wanted to write, she wanted her to sit down and write down the, all the pros and cons of what was going to happen if she took this decision. Um, and uh, my mother in the beginning, she kind of accused my Nana, she was a bar that we called her as um, she said, well, you're worried more about the family honor, a girl that comes back. It's a disgrace, especially they lived in a little village. The village's name was um, Dharmaj, Dharamraj, you know, so people who, are, who lived in that village were expected to be following the Vedic system, uh, Dharma. So my Nana was like, no, I, I, that's not it. I'm not pushing you. I, I don't care, honor, dishonor. I'm, I'm worried about you. I want to know about you, what you are thinking. So when my mother wrote down this list, she, she found out that all the negative, my father's positives out completely outweighed the negatives. He was a person that supported her, paid for her younger siblings' um, livelihood because my nana became a widow from a very young age, contracted leprosy, lost the use, she was completely bedridden. My father paid for all of this. Um, so then my grandmother also said, you know, Krishna, uh, you have found yourself into this position, married with this person. Nothing is random. There is a purpose to Krishna's plans. You have trusted in him. Trust that there's a reason why you've been put into this. Don't prematurely cut people off from your life because, oh, you know, this person's less Krishna conscious. Well, I'm going to remove him. Don't prematurely take steps. Think of their positives, just like Krishna. He doesn't just focus on our flaws. Even one minute, small quantity of goodness that we have. Krishna's focusing on that. So my Nana wanted my mother to realize this. Anyway, the long and short end of the story is my mother went back and um, they did live in a joint family for a while, but my mother was so stubborn. 
she, it, she was completely in their face the entire time they were sitting there eating their meat and drinking. She was in their face because they knew that she she upheld her um, religious practices and they felt they came a time when they felt ashamed to be eating this meat or drinking in front of her. They became completely ashamed. My mother didn't really have to say to preach to them, but just by knowing that she's upholding this religious principle and you can't knock her off that with whatever behavior you have, that the family slowly started to become a bit more Krishna conscious. My father absolutely respected my mother for that because she didn't go out all out war. It was more of I'm upholding my behavior and, you know, that's going to make the difference. Anyway, um, you know, yeah. my father, there came a point when my father, he, in his, uh, um, uh, he he wanted devotees to come to his house, uh, sannyasis to come to his home. He he loved that. He loved like the prasadam and the kirtan, and um, uh, you know he is so Krishna conscious now. He completely says it's to his guru, and but a lot of credit he gives to my mother. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, your 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 father. It sounds like he had the benefit of very, of a very strong neck in his life. <laughs> Namely, his wife. So that's nice. Was it? Uh, an, Miss, oh, I'm, I'm. I'm assuming it was like an arranged marriage or something. Yes, it was very much an arranged marriage. My father had um, actually he'd had a, his first wife um, died in childbirth, and then he didn't want to get married. But then he did get married um, a second time, and um, this is my father's um, also the way Krishna arranged it for him. He married a woman who was so Krishna conscious she didn't want any she didn't want very much to do with him. She didn't want to consummate the marriage or any of that because she brought her deity, and she said she was married to Krishna. So that was, she She had an unfortunate accident and died. My father actually didn't even live with her because he felt at that point in time, he wasn't, he, he promised her that, okay, this is how you feel. But in, in society, she couldn't send, very well send her back to her house. That would have been so dishonorable for her family. So my father decided to leave her in India and just leave the country so he wouldn't have to really face this. Uh, problem and fortunately she died so when my father's marriage was arranged to my mother he was so shocked um, when he visited her home because all he didn't want to marry a woman who was very Krishna conscious because he actually wanted a marriage with where he could have children so when he saw my Nana's house on the walls you know Srinathji Yamunama he thought well I'm just gonna leave I don't think this is gonna work out but it was um, was one of the first questions he asked my mother. He asked to speak to her alone, which that was also violating the rules. You never, in an arranged marriage, asked to speak to the girl in that day and those day and um, time. But my nana's like, that's all right. She can, you can speak with her in the other room. And so my father, um, he said, well, you've got your your family is Vaishnavas. It's very clear. Um, but can you please tell me, are you married to Krishna? My mother was so horrified. She thought my father must have been completely mad. She's like, are you mad? Krishna's a little child. He's just a little baby. I'm like, no. I'm, you know. Um, anyway, um, it wasn't it was an arranged marriage, but my father was very relieved that my mother wasn't married to Krishna. <laughs> and so she could bring her deity as a little child. Um, yes. Um, anyway, there's comments in the chat box yeah. uh, and Prabhin says one woman was rejected by her husband's family. Her brother took care of her for life. She was not seen as a burden, although he was not in the three traditional roles of taking care. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've seen this instance as well, where brothers, sometimes uncles, grandparents. Now I've I'm finding myself in a position where my father's he's 94 and his health hasn't been very good at all. Um, and I became a single parent. And um, so it's a case of now it's not so much I'm taking care of him, but I'm very much dependent on my father. And he's very much um, he was just so Krishna conscious. He's he, he's very quick to point out all my shortcomings. And, uh, you know, I feel very um I feel very blessed that my father has been with me for the last 25 years. I mean, of course, he was there during my childhood, but so much more now because I'm seeing all, um, how Krishna conscious he is and how much he keeps me on my toes. Um, all right. <laughs> that's all that I find in the chat box. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting example given by Prabin. Of course, this person is 
in the family, as part of the family, the his earlier comment didn't really mention whether or not such a person was part of the family, just some responsible man. So that was where I uh, threw up a red flag. But uh, yeah, if this, this sounded like the situation worked, that the woman was protected by her brother, which is nice. We adjust according to time. Yeah, you have to make some adjustment. Time, place, circumstance. Just so unfortunate in Kali Yuga and so lamentable that uh, women are so unprotected. Just anyway. It's lamented early on in Bhagavad Gita by Arjun for seeing, you know, the effects of the ravages of war and, you know, his his lamentation, although based on the bodily concept of which our, uh, Krishna addresses in Bhagavad Gita, nevertheless rings true down here years later, decades, thousands, millennia later in Kali Yuga. Uh, un unwanted progeny, unwanted, unwanted women, uh, broken families. It's, it's a... It's a dire time, and Krishna consciousness can really help alleviate the, the sufferings of humanity at this dire time. So, um, shall we move on to the next verse? It is text 41. Would you like to read it? Go we or? Okay. Who would like to read the next verse? Who do we have now? We have. Mother Tulsi Priya, I guess she doesn't want to, to speak. Um, I'll read. Okay, great. Please do. We are on 41, you said? Yes. Okay. Maitreya Uvacha evam samuditastena kapilena prajapati dakshini kritya tam prito vanam eva jagamaha Sri Maitreya said, Thus, when Kardama Muni, the progenitor of human society of human society, was spoken to in fullness by his son Kapila, he circumambulated him, and with a good pacified mind, he at once left for the forest. Going to the forest is compulsory for everyone. It is not a mental excursion upon which one person goes and another does not. Everyone should go to the forest, at least as a bana forest. Forest going means to take 100% shelter of the Supreme Lord, as explained by Pallad Maharaj in, talks, in his talks with his father. Sada Samudvigya Diyam, Bhagavatam 755. People who have accepted a temporary material body are always full of anxieties. One should not, therefore, be very much affected by this material body, but should try to be freed. The preliminary process to become freed is to go to the forest or give up family relationships and exclusively engage in Krishna consciousness. That is the purpose of going to the forest. Otherwise, the forest is only a place of monkeys and wild animals. To go to the forest does not mean to become a monkey or ferocious animal. It means to accept exclusively the shelter of the personality of Godhead and engage oneself in full service. One does not actually have to go to the forest. At the present moment, it is not at all advisable for a man who has spent his life all along in big cities. As explained by Pallad Maharaj, Hivatma Patam Griham Anda Kupam. One should not remain always engaged in the responsibilities of family life, because family life without Krishna consciousness is just like a blind well. Alone in a field, if one falls into a blind well and no one is there to save him, he may cry for years and no one will see or hear where the crying is com coming from. Death is sure. Similarly, those who are forgetful of their eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord are in the blind well of family life. Their position is very ominous. Prahlad Maharaj advised that one should give up this well somehow or other and take to Krishna consciousness and thus be freed from material entanglement, which is full of anxieties. Would you like to make some comments on what you've read? I understand the anxieties part. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It all it all makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> um, I can imagine that taking Vanaprost must be difficult after being entangled for so long though. Hmm. Um, One becomes accustomed uh to the uh, quote unquote comforts of family life, but spiritual life requires some austerity. It requires it requires this. It requires some effort to to achieve anything that is extraordinary. It requires effort. So what is more extraordinary than to get out of the material entanglement? So there's some effort involved. There's tapasya, tapo divyam, putuka eva sattvam. Is it like that? Tapodivyam. There's divine austerity or divine effort that's required. And uh, in the Varnashram system, recommended in the Vedic literatures, Vanaprastha is there so that one can gradually become free. It doesn't mean like, you know, it's like you, you're, you're, if you've been in, in Grihastha life for, for quite some time, 25, 30 years, it doesn't mean that, you know, necessarily that you're going to shirk off all of your uh, acquired habits of comfort and, and uh, you know, material duties immediately. But there has to be a plan to become relieved of them. Therefore, you see in different models of Anaprasta, the husband and wife stay together and travel. Or uh, they are home, they go, and then they come back, and then they go. And at some point, uh, they become more uh, fixed in uh, full-time spiritual service uh, as vanaprastas. So they may, you know, remove themselves from home uh, permanently. So that th those those different steps can be there even in the vanaprasta ashram. But the principle in the vanaprasta ashram is. No more, no more life centered around sex life, centered around the husband and wife and children and the family and the rest. That's done. Uh, and then one goes from there. But again, it's like the Vanaprastha system takes into account the psychology of human beings, at least of civilized human beings, that they're going to go from student life to married life, from married life to Vanaprastha or quote unquote semi retired life. And then to retired life, or meaning retiring from material activities completely, or sannyas. So that that is, it's a very, in, in that sense, it's a very rational and practical approach to making spiritual advancement for the, the general human society. Does anybody else want to make some comments? There's something in the chat box. Um, I think it's Sikandar Prabhu. He says... Um... Uh, what did he say? Okay. Um, Srila Prabhupada says in his purport to the verse he quoted, 7.5.5, Prahlad recommended to his father that accepting Vanaprastha life would be better than going deeper and deeper into Graham Andhakuppam, the blind well of life as a Grahasta. In our Krishna conscious movement, we therefore invite all the elderly persons of the world to come to Vrindavan and stay there in retired life making advancement in spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness. And he expands further. I like this sentence in the purport. It is not a mental excursion upon which one person goes and another does not. It's a natural progression. Sorry, just, um, it's a natural progression. As we age, we lose the capacity to deal with stuff. And there's a comment by Praveen. But should I read that? Yes, please. Uh, wouldn't a person chanting 16 rounds, following four regulative principles, doing some temple services, some preaching, go back to Godhead, even if he stays in his home? He may not have sex and other Vanaprastha rules, but he stays at home with his, with his family. Yes. That 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 can be done, 
But here we're getting the recommendation from the Acharyas down through Srila Prabhupada that Banaprasta is recommended. In other words, uh, such a situation may be possible, but um, it's expected that according to the, the the advice and guidance of the Acharyas, that at some point or another, one become detached from family life, not staying at home, but becoming a Vanaprastha. So that advice, that, that's, it's good advice, strong advice. Um, there may be exceptions to the general rule, of course. Uh, even Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, describes in one of his songs, no matter what situation you're in, whether you're a home, um, you know, householder, sannyasi, whatever, whatever your particular position, you just chant Hare Krishna and make your life perfect. There's no need to change your situation. But we have this recommendation according to the Vedic literatures and according to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada speaks to this very strongly in those verses in 7th Canto, 5th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. If anyone wants to read them and get a good uh, a good shaking, <laughs> if one wants to stay comfortable after many years in household life, just read those, those uh, Bhaktivedanta commentaries and take a good thrashing <laughs> because he makes it real clear that you have to you have to take your spiritual life further. You have to be serious about getting back, uh, of getting out of material life. So I'm not saying that such a per, such a person as Prabhupada suggested is not serious, but in general, this is the this is the best advice to follow, Vanuprastha. At that at that age, in that position, is that all right? Does Prabhupada think that Prabhupada is that okay? For being Krishna Prabhu. Ekandra Prabhu has actually commented to Praveen. Uh, it, um, it means to accept exclusively the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engage oneself in full service. That seems to be the prescription, full service. As Panjadatva Prabhu says, one has to be serious. And Praveen says yes um, to your question. He's is satisfied with the answer. Hare Krishna. Let's see. All right. We are at text 42. Who would like to, Marai Gupta Prabhu, would you like to read text 42? Nobody will be able to hear it. Huh? My voice is my voice is very uh, messed up. I don't think oh. anyone will be able to hear it. I'm sorry. I can, I can hear you, but if but if your if your voice is ailing, we don't want to put you in an awkward position. Well, not only that, but I'm lying flat on my back and just holding the phone. Uh, oh, in my okay, hand. okay. All right, all right. Have, all right. Well, you. thank. you. Thank you for thank you for wanting to, <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank How you. about Dana? Yeah. yeah, Dana, would you like to read the next verse and purport? I will try. Okay. Forty-two, right? Yes. Ratam sa astito manam atmaika sarano munahi mi asango va charat. Shanim Aginir Aniketanaha. Translation The sage Karnama accepted silence as a vow in order to think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and took shelter of him exclusively. Without association, he traveled over the surface of the globe as a sannyasi, devoid of any relationship with fire or shelter. Purport Hear the words Angi Aginir Aniketanaha. Ketanaha are very significant. A sannyasi should be completely detached from fire in any residential quarters. A grahasta has a relationship with fire, either for offering sacrifices or for cooking, but a sannyasi is free from these two responsibilities. He does not have to cook or offer fire for sacrifice because he is always engaged in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, he has already accomplished all ritualistic performances of religion. Ani Ketanaha means without lodging. 
he should not have his own house, but could depend completely on the Supreme Lord for his food and lodging. He should travel. Mana means silence. Unless one becomes silent, he cannot think completely about the pastimes and activities of the Lord. It is not that because one is a fool and cannot speak nicely, he therefore takes the vow of Mana. Therefore, one becomes silent so that people will not disturb him. It is said by Chanakya, Chanakya Pandita that a rascal appears very intelligent as long as he does not speak. But speaking is the test. The so-called silence of a silent and personalist while me indicates that he has nothing to say. He simply wants to beg. But the silence adopted by Kadamamuni was not like that. He became silent for relief from nonsensical talk. One is called a Muni when he remains grave and does not talk nonsense. Maharaj Am Barisha set a very good example. Whenever he spoke, he spoke about the pastimes of the Lord. Mama necessitates refraining from nonsensical talking and engaging the talking facility in the pastimes of the Lord. In that way, one can chant and hear about the Lord in order to perfect his life. Rata means that one should take a vow as explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Amanitvam am adam bitvam, without hankering for personal respect and without being proud of one's material position. Ahimsa means not being violent. There are 18 processes for attaining knowledge and perfection, and by this, his vow, Kardama Muni adopted all the principles of self realization. Jai. Oh, sorry, I was I was muted. Uh, Dana, is there anything that you'd like to say about this verse and purport? Anything that stands out or you'd like to comment on? Hmm. I'm still digesting it. I think that the whole idea of becoming silent is really, it really hit me because I needed that for myself. I'm not just like the talking, but even like silencing my mind the talking in my mind, the chatter. Um, and you always hear that, like, um, quotes or people that say, like, you know, you can't hear, you know, hear until you get still. And I just, I don't know, that part just really stood out to me. Um, and of course, like, for sure, you know, being careful what comes out of, out of the mouth, what we say what I speak of or what, you know, is mm -hmm. definitely important for sure. But I think it starts with my mind. Like if I can quiet that and I can still that and I can, it helps, you know, with what comes <laughs> coming out of my mouth. But anyway, that was what really stood out for me a lot. So. <laughs> Thank you. Nice points. Yeah, it's also recommended uh, in the Nectar of Instruction, uh, Upadesh Amrita by Rupa Goswami, uh, that one has to control the, the tongue. And Prabhupada says that the tongue has two functions, uh, vibrating and tasting. So if one can control the tongue, he can control all the other senses of the body. And of course, in, in this age, the tongues of most persons and so forth are, are completely out of control. So in Krishna consciousness, we control the tongue by vibrating the Hare Krishna mantra and by honoring only food stuffs which are offered to Krishna with love and devotion. And that way the tongue can be restricted properly and protected from causing us degradation. Uh, because when the tongue is out of order, or out of control, the mind is out of order and out of control the senses become out of control and one can fall down in various ways into material activities. So there's a high, a high value placed upon bringing the tongue under control. And uh, here the sages, they, they uh, remain silent just to avoid nonsense talks. If you go up to a silent person and you try to engage with them and they don't respond, 
you end up giving up, generally speaking. <laughs> One of the, the great sage Judd Bharat gave this example. Uh, in his, it was Bharat Maharaj in his next, in his uh, second life after he was Bharat Maharaj, he took uh, the form of a deer in his next life because of his attachment to the deer. But after that life as a deer, he was uh, born as Bar as Judd Bharat. And as Judd Bharat, he appeared to be deaf and dumb. He was actually full of transcendental knowledge. Uh, but until the time, up to the point he met Maharaj Rahugana and gave him transcendental instructions, he remained entirely speechless. He didn't speak. His father and his brothers thought he was just a, a dumb brute and uh, treated him as such, not very nicely. You know, basically, yeah, basically using him like, like a scarecrow in, in, in the fields to protect the crops and so forth. Um, at any, and then, and then uh, this, this story goes on from there. He was, you know, uh, uh, kidnapped by some Dakoites who wanted to use him as a human offering to the goddess Kali. That's another description in Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, we won't go into the details there. But the point was that throughout all of those travails, up until he found himself in a position to give this transcendental knowledge to Maharaj Rahugana, he remained completely silent of, of following this vow of Monavrata. So it has its place. For a Krishna conscious devotee, Mona means not speaking prajalpa or nonsense talks. One of Bhakta Doug Prabhu's favorite early Hare Krishna words, prajalpa. <laughs> Prajalpa Niyamagraha. We, we are supposed to avoid speaking nonsense talk, nonsense, and at the same time, uh, take every opportunity to speak in a Krishna conscious way. That way we can make spiritual advancement. And that's control of the tongue. That's our form of monavrata. Not that we don't speak at all, although it has its place, as you can see from uh, the uh, vow of Kardama Muni. For us, it, it means not speaking, avoiding speaking nonsense, avoiding prajapa or nonsense talks. Does anybody else have any anything to say, yes. Mother Saraswati? Is there anything more? Yes, there is. Um, Ekander Prabhu says, I was wondering whether Ankitena without lodging would prohibit motor homes, but then I recalled that Srila Prabhupada <laughs> was in favor of several traveling buses full of sannyasis and brahmacharis. And I myself am thinking also with Vidura how he left uh, the palace and the politics, uh, the dirty politics, I should say, <laughs> and traveled as a, you know, in almost incognito, anonymously. He didn't want anyone knowing who he was. I mean, he held that uh, that high position of prime minister. But um, and he met Mitra Muni and, uh, you know, just uh, his whole mind and uh, was focused on Krishna consciousness uh, uninterrupted. Anyway, uh, we've got a comment by Praveen as well. Anashrita karma phalam karyam karma karotiya sasanyasi cha yogi cha na nirgnir na chakriya. The Supreme Personality of God had said, one who is unattached to the fruits of his work and who works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life and he is the true mystic, not he who lights no fire and performs no Yeah. Very good. <laughs> it looks like it's time to end this class. We've reached eight o'clock sharp Eastern Standard Time. Hare Krishna. That was a nice discussion. Thank you. Thank you all. Is uh, can we have someone step forward to lead the closing kirtan? So just lost my page. Whoa. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 
Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hari Bo. Jai Ho Vishnupad, Brahamsa, Parivraj, Jagacharya, Astro, Tadasata, Sri Srima, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Jai Ho Vishnupad, Brahamsa, Parivraj, Jagacharya, Astro Tarasata Sri Srima, His Divine Grace, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, Goswami Siddha Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai, Namacharya Siddha Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Prem Seka Ho Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nichananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gauru Bhakti Vrinda, Jai Sri Sri Radha, Krishna Go, Gopina Samakum, Radhakum, Kiri Govardhana Ki Jai, Sri Vrindavan Dhamma Ki Jai, Sri Matura Dhamma Ki Jai, Sri Navadri Dhamma Ki Jai, Sri Jagazan Puri Dhamma Ki Jai, <laughs> Dhamma Ki Jai, Gaur Premanandi Hare Hare Paul. All glories to the sum of devotees, all glories to the sum of devotees, all glories to the sum of devotees, Jai Sri Guru Engaranga Nikitai Gaur Premanandi Hare Paul. Thank you so much, Krishna Kante Prabhu. Jai, Jai, Jai. And thank you, everyone, for making this another lively evening of Krishna Kata, or if it's another time of day where you are, another time of day, a lovely time of day. Srimad <laughs> Bhagavatam ki jai. Srimad Prabhupada ki jai. Friends of Jai Advaita Swami Maharaj ki jai. Jai. Jai, jai.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.